I believe that most of you know me, for those who don't. I'm Nicholas Dinisopoulos. I'm the lead developer of uh, Akiba Backup and all the other Akiba extensions. And today I'm going to talk to you about uh, some features that Joomla has for developers that are hidden in plain sight. This is a pun. I know how to spell English. Okay, so uh, most of us know that Joomla is like a Swiss Army knife, but we mostly use it like this, as a knife. But there are quite a few more things to Joomla than, uh, than, the, than the obvious. Uh, but before I go into the advanced stuff, since uh, some of you watching this keynote might be uh, developers who are just beginning to get a grasp of Joomla, uh, you have probably only used uh, PHP at a very basic scripting language, uh, at a very basic scripting language level. I want to tell you some things that you should do and some things you should avoid when developing for Joomla. So, uh, some junior development stuff. And let's start with the input. Most likely, when you were using PHP as a scripting language, you were referencing the, the global uh, dollar get, dollar post, etc. Never do that with Joomla. Always go through the J input object that you can get from J factory get application. Uh, I want to say that at the end of, uh, of this presentation, I will have a link to the file, so if you cannot see the code, you can see it there. On top of basic input, you also need to have file uploads, and this is something that even uh, some of the more experienced developers screw up. If you want to do a file upload in Joomla, do not reference the global files array. Just go through input files and tell it to get the name of, uh, of your uploaded file. By default, since Joomla 3.4, we have some security checks, so you cannot upload uh, um, files containing uh, PHP or other malicious, uh, common malicious things in them. If for any reason you don't want to do that, for example, you want to upload a zip file containing PHP code, then you will have to modify your call a little bit and tell it to get the name of your uploaded file and the third parameter should be row, which means disable upload checks. But do not do that always, only do that when you do have a very specific reason. Um, if you're manipulating date and time, most likely you're using PHP's uh, date method, which only provides you some basic formatting and is not uh, time zone aware. Instead, you can go through JDate, also through JFactory, JFactory get date and your date string, and this returns you an object that is aware of the time zone that uh, uh, this time was set, the time zone of your client, and you can very easily format it using Joomla's standard format. Same goes with URI manipulation. In plain PHP, you're probably using parse URI, which is okay, it gives you some basic features, but in Joomla you have JURI, where you can also manipulate many more things in the URL and make your life easier. So basically, if I am looking at your code and I do not see you using any of these, and instead relying on plain old PHP functions, I know that uh, your code is probably crap. Yeah, you have probably introduced some security issue for your clients because you're completely unaware of how Joomla works. Um, but then again, this is the very basic part of Joomla where you're using Joomla as a knife. But Joomla has a little bit more depth to it. It's a Swiss Army knife, so let's start unfolding all the tools that you have in this, uh, in this tool set. Let's see some serious low-level stuff that can make your life much easier. Many times, you want to perform HTTP transfers in your applications, like accessing a remote API or downloading some, uh, some package file from somewhere. The typical fallback with PHP developers is let's use, let's use curl, right? Or let's use fopen or file get content. The thing is, do you know 
if curl is available on your client server. Do you know if uh, URL file opens are allowed on your client server? So you end up with if blocks and uh, a huge code to just do a very simple HTTP GET. Instead of that, Joomla already gives you JHTTP. You can create a, a JHTTP object through JHTTP factory, and then using just one line of code, you can tell it to automatically perform a GET, a POST, or whatever request without all the pain of you having to know uh, all that stuff that, allow your, uh, that would allow your code to run on uh, different servers. Another cool thing that is allowed by Joomla, and I believe that most of you are unaware, is that it allows um, stream input-output. Instead of uh, just having a plain old uh, file stream that you can get with uh, PHP, you can use JStream, which allows you to automatically handle gzip content, bzip2 content, or plain old files transparently. So you just create your stream, do all your read-write operations, and everything is encoded and decoded magically. And of course, if you have a zip archive or a tar, uh, targz, targz2, basically any kind of archive that also the Joomla installer supports, you can extract it on your server without having to write your own unarchivers. And this can be done with jarchive extract. This code is also used in the Joomla extensions installer if you're brave enough to dive into that code. Uh, how many of you have tried reading that code? How many of you liked that code? Yeah, exactly. More than in 3.3 More than? In 3.3 it was first and Yeah, uh, in 3.4 it was mostly rewritten thanks to Michael. Yeah, he did a great job. Give him an applause. Okay, since we're in Europe, how many of you are aware of uh, UTF-8 domains? Right? How many of you have heard about, uh, I don't know if I spell it, if I say it correctly, Punicode? Punicode, yes. Okay, so very few of you. Basically, if you're using a UTF-8 domain and you try to access it directly, on, uh, in, in many occasions it will not work. You will have to go through the Punicode uh, uh, domain name, which is um, a, very, a, a mangled version using just ASCII code that allows you to access that domain using any tool that accepts only uh, ASCII car set. And Joomla provide this conversion, this IDNA conversion, using JString Puni uh, I can't pronounce this. Pa uh, Punicode. Damn it. It's, yeah. It's, yeah, I try. It's hard for me. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, it, it, it's not a sound that I normally produce in my everyday language. Okay, so there are different functions to convert email addresses because email addresses are really strange. The part before the at sign can be UTF-8. The part after the at sign, no, because it's a domain. Uh, there are other two methods to convert uh, domains from UTF-8 to Punicode, yes, said it, and back. <laughs> Time terminology. Okay, how many of you know that Joomla has image manipulation? Michael, don't raise your hand. <laughs> so Michael told me about JEMAS. I had absolutely no idea. I had never used that. And this gave me the inspiration for this presentation. So if you're trying to create thumbnails, most likely uh, your first instinct is, uh, okay, PHP has the GD library, let's use it. Uh, how many of you liked how they can use plain old GD library without a wrapper? Nobody? Yeah, exactly. It's because it's really painful. There is um, this abstraction called JImage. You can just tell it to, for example, create thumbnails. You just give it a list of um, dimensions, a, fi uh, um, a file name, and a directory where you want the thumbnails to be created, 
and there you have them. So if you have written your uh, CCK or your, I don't know, uh, gallery where it needs thumbnails in different sizes or probably your social extension and the avatars need to be different sizes to be served uh, to different clients, instead of trying to do everything manually, you can, you can just use the emails and there you have it, one line of code, everything created for you. With payments, you can also do some more advanced stuff, including uh, altering and converting images. Uh, basically, you create a J image object with your image, and then you can uh, filter it, rotate it, resize it, or even apply your own custom filters, uh, which is extremely useful in all those cases that I mentioned before. And now let's get to some even more advanced stuff that um, are useful to many more developers files, databases, and services. Joomla has an awesome GitHub integration, which is currently used in two major areas. One of them that uh, most of you have used at least yesterday is the issue, the issue tracker, the Joomla issue tracker, which is a custom application based on the Joomla framework using say, GitHub to connect to GitHub and do all the magic fetching the pull requests, adding comments, reading comments, and stuff like that. You can even uh, check out uh, GitHub branches. Um, you can make commits. You can roll back. So it's very possible to create your own um, custom solution to update your site through a GitHub repository instead of uh, going through the ancient way of connecting through FTP or SFTP and uploading files. And how many of you have accidentally deleted the wrong file? Okay. I know the rest of your lying. I mean, come on, you've all done that. How many of you have edited the wrong file? Okay, that's more likely the truth. Yeah. So if you want to apply a patch file that's not on GitHub, there is also this awesome uh, class called JFile System Patcher, which is used, can you guess where? Mm -hmm. Yes, COM Patch Tester, the official component of Joomla to test patches, pull requests. This is also <clears throat> a cool idea if you want to provide updates to your site without uh, having to upload individual files, because you can apply a patch in one go, it either applies or it doesn't. And now let's get to, to the database. You have uh, probably heard of uh, JSchema uh, chain set. If you have, no, uh, not heard, you have used JSchema chain set. If you have gone into manage extensions, database tab, you remember that there is that fix button when your Joomla site is screwed up. The first thing you do is go there and click that fix button and some magic happens this is the magic that happens. Uh, basically, the code tells JSchema chain set to read all the SQL files that create and update Joomla's database and try to figure out which of them have been applied and which haven't. And those which haven't been applied, it tries to apply them with the fix method. And you can do that with your own extensions. I mean, right now you're packaging your components and you have uh, an install or SQL directory, whatever you call it, where you have all the SQL files that create and update your database. And for some reason, a user installs an update, something goes wrong, the database isn't updated, uh, his installation of your component is broken, what do you do? Well, in the first uh, page of your component, you can add a button which calls this code and your problems are automatically solved. And if you don't fancy using a huge collection of SQL files to manage your schema updates, because they can grow really unwieldy, you can use XML-based schema updates. This is currently part of uh, FOF2, which is shipped with Joomla 3.2 and later. Uh, this class, uh, FOF Database Installer, is available in Joomla 3.3 and 3.4. And basically, you have a single XML file which does all the database installation and updates. Uh, you can just take a look at it. 
you can take a look at uh, how all my extensions install and manage the, the schema updates, and probably you may want to use that too in your extensions. It comes for free with Joomla 3. Hey, that's a nice catchphrase. That wasn't scripted. <laughs> now, there is something in Joomla called database export and import that has existed since Joomla 1.6. How many of you have heard of get exporter and get importer in J database? How many of you have actually successfully used it? Yeah, somewhat. Yeah, I know. Uh, the export actually works most of the times. Uh, it's very easy. You just uh, tell the database driver to give you an exporter, export as XML. You have an XML file that you can import using get importer. Well, almost. It seems that uh, since June 2010, that was five years ago, there is a small bug. Uh, you can get the importer all right, you can tell it to load an XML file, you cannot run merge structure because it's a protected function that's not made available at all. So you have to go through reflection. Uh, yeah, as I was writing the slide, I, I, I tried accessing merge structure, oh, it's protected, damn. So this is probably a bug fix that we will have to consider in the very immediate future. <laughs> but yeah, if you, if you go through the reflection, me uh, the reflection method, yes, the database import works. So there you have yet another way to uh, move SQL data between Joomla installations. So now you have three. You have um, the normal SQL files that Joomla uses, you have the uh, XML files in FOF and you have the import and export XML feature in Joomla itself. You have choices. Now, there are some really great features that are shipped with Joomla and most people are completely unaware. Services, lots of services. Facebook, LinkedIn, Google, Twitter, MediaWiki, OAuth, OpenStreetMap, do you know what they have in common? They have implementations that ship with Joomla, and their names are quite predictable. J Facebook, J LinkedIn, J Google, J Twitter, J MediaWiki, J OAuth one client, and J OAuth two client, no server, which is a pity. J OpenStreetMap. Uh, most of them work, work quite nicely. Uh, so if you're trying to create, uh, let's say, a social extension or um, uh, have a, a Facebook or, or LinkedIn or Google or Twitter login plugin, you don't have to pull in your own library. You don't have to. You can use what Joomla 3 provides. Uh, there is a small pitfall here. Since uh, Michael did his keynote before mine, he told you that um, these classes, except say GitHub, are not quite maintained. So they might go away in the future. They will not go away in Joomla 3 because we're not going to break backwards compatibility. But Joomla 4, your guess is as good as mine. But if you're trying to create a login plugin for Joomla 3 that you will have to anyway rewrite for Joomla 4, you can use them just fine. You no need to reinvent the wheel. Um, Another thing that uh, we have inside Joomla is uh, some cryptographic functions. JKeyChain and JCrypt. JKeyChain is used to manage your keys. I will not go into great detail here. It's best to just read the comments on the class itself if you're interested in, uh, in this kind of thing. Uh, JCrypt, on the other hand, allows you to easily encrypt and decrypt data using um, some very common methods, uh, triple DS, don't use that, it's not secure, Blowfish, so and so, region dial 256, which is pretty much what AES is using, that's okay. Uh, simple crypt, no, never use that, it's really bad. Uh, or you can just hook into mcrypt and use whatever mcrypt provides. Go to the PHP uh, documentation page for mcrypt and you will see a huge list of uh, algorithms supported. There is CAPTCHA. 
I think it was added in Joomla 3.1 or something like that. How many of you are using CAPTCHA in their own extensions? Okay. How many of you would like to use CAPTCHA in their own extensions but don't know how to? Okay, we've got at least one. Yeah. Um, yes, there are two ways. One way is using JFORM. So obviously you can only use CAPTCHA if you have an edit form. Um, the thing is, if you don't have an edit form, how do you do it? You would have to read how that field works. And to save you some time, I have done that work. Basically, you get uh, the, the name of the CAPTCHA plugin that is set up in uh, J configuration, the global configuration. You create an instance of that plugin, and then you can either display it or check it. You display it on the page that the user has to fill in a form and you check it in the code which handles the form submission. And if the check doesn't work, then the CAPTCHA input has failed, so you should not continue processing the form. It's a bot. And the very cool thing about that is that you don't even need to know which kind of CAPTCHA they're using. Are they using reCAPTCHA? Are they using a playthrough CAPTCHA? Something else? Who knows? You don't care. Your code still remains the same. That's a good thing with uh, all the abstraction that's built in the, into Joomla. It makes your life as a developer easy. You work on the, on the abstracted API and you let Joomla handle everything for you. This is for template developers mostly. You can compile less to CSS. Uh, if I had a dime for every single time that I've seen a template developer either having their own less compiler telling their clients to use this or that less compiler or use a JavaScript less compiler, which automatically makes your site break on everybody's browser who has disabled JavaScript, uh, I would be filthy rich right now and there would be a Learjet waiting for me at the airport. So don't try to reinvent the wheel. Uh, no, we don't like your square wheel. No, we don't like your octagonal wheel. You can just use JLS which is a, a thin wrapper on, around uh, uh, less PHP. Which, hmm? What? Yeah, it should be compiled. Yeah, I made a typo. Hey, someone is, is actually reading my code. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, bug report. So you see, when, when, yeah. No, it only generates the CSS file. It's, it's less PHP. Everything that less PHP does, this does it. Uh, so if in your less file you have a, a, a JavaScript function, uh, no, it won't work. But then again, the JavaScript function only works if you're using the original less compiler which runs uh, with JavaScript or Node.js. And the basic instruction is do not use that. So. It, it can do everything else, so it can do 99% of less to CSS conversion. And from what I've seen with uh, uh, the less files used by template clubs, it's way more than enough. You can manipulate the breadcrumbs that the user sees, and this is an important thing that goes generally unnoticed by developers when they're building components with a front-end part. Um, for example, in uh, a keyboard release system, I'm manipulating breadcrumbs, so when you go from um, the overall overview of the download repository into a category, into a specific version, you get the breadcrumbs, even though there are not menu items in Joomla itself. So if you have, let's say, a social extension, you may want to manipulate breadcrumbs so that the user isn't lost. I mean, if all they see on their site on, on the page of the site is that they are visiting the social part of your site, but they have no idea which page of that social page they're in, uh, your users will feel a little lost. They cannot go back. They don't know what's going on. So uh, think about breadcrumbs. It's a small thing that can make a big difference. Microdata, I'm by no means no expert in microdata, I have no clue about microdata. 
So all I can tell you is go to docs.joomla.org slash microdata and then learn how to use all the Joomla built-in methods to insert microdata into your content output. Microdata is schema.org support. So apparently this is something that does make it much easier for search engines to uh, make heads and tails of your data, of, your, of, the, of the content of the page. Um, of course, Joomla is much more than a CMS. How many of you know that there, uh, you can use Joomla to create CLI applications? Very good. Arbitrary web applications? Very nice. System demons? Hey, there are a few writing system demons with Joomla. Awesome. Uh, for, those, for those of you who don't know that, you can create all those things with uh, J application variations. J application CLI is actually my most favorite Joomla API class because it allows me to create CLI scripts that have access to everything Joomla does. The same uh, database, the same MVC API. Um, so I can automate tasks through cron jobs running on the command line. It's awesome. J application web is very nice for two reasons. One is that you can create your own custom application without using the CMS, but then you would have to be Michael to do that and create an issue tracker. Yeah. Uh, but most of us are not um, uh, such raging masochists, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you agree? It takes one to no one. Yeah, it takes one to no one. That's for sure. I am one. Yeah. Yes. So this is what I'm about to say now. You can create custom entry point files, directly, directly web accessible PHP files. Um, for example, used with some really peculiar payment gateways that do not accept URL parameters in the in the return URL that you give them. Uh, so far, this is the only valid use case that I found for doing that inside a component. Many people will think that uh, if they want to produce custom CSS or custom JavaScript, they should write their own, uh, say, application web file. Don't. Uh, there is one more use case. Yeah. Uh, if you have protected images or files. If you have protected images or, fi or files, as, yeah, I, so as, as I just said, do not go through a J application web. Instead you, can, instead, you can use a very nice system plugin that's really lightweight and doesn't open another backdoor to your site. Yeah, it's, it's really that simple. It's a, it's a tried solution, believe me. Uh, I, I have not used J application daemon, so I cannot tell you uh, what are the use cases, but yeah, I can think a lot of automation cases like continuously pulling a service and updating something on your site. That would make sense. So basically, when I said that Joomla is like a Swiss Army knife, I had something like that in mind. <laughs> yeah, there are a hell of a lot of things. It can get really complicated at times, but do not approach it with fear, approach it with curiosity. When I started writing this keynote, I opened PHP Storm. I loaded the latest uh, staging branch of uh, Joomla CMS. And I started exploring. I started exploring from the libraries directory. When you open the libraries directory, and then you open the Joomla and the CMS subdirectories, there is a treasure trove of things there. So many classes, so many APIs. Things that uh, you might not be using right now. You might have no idea why you should be using them. But it's good to know that they do exist, because when you need them, you will not have to reinvent the wheel. You will not have to lose time over solving an already solved problem. And there is another thing in Joomla that makes it even more wonderful, is that we have started finally using Composer. One of the challenges that we have for Joomla 4 and beyond is how to let developers leverage Composer through their extensions. So many of those APIs, which are invented in Joomla, 
do not have to be invented in Joomla. We should be able to use uh, already existing solutions out there. For example, I don't want to write my own Amazon class. There is already the uh, Amazon AWS SDK for PHP available through Composer. I don't want to ship my, my framework as a library package. I want it to be installable through Composer. So I hope that next year, about the same time of the year, when we will be somewhere else for say and beyond 2016, we will be having a presentation on how you can use Composer to make Joomla even more awesome. May the core be with you. Thank <laughs> you.